Hello and welcome back to X-Plane 11. Thank you very much for joining me in this video and today I'm going to be doing a little bit of practice getting back into the sort of swing of things since it's been a while since I've played X-Plane 11. It's been a while since I've flown this aircraft. Uh, done a little bit on a, on a failed episode but um, it, it has been a while and sort of getting back into the whole crosswind uh, landing circuit just so I can um, essentially fly the aircraft again uh, as I as I should be flying it so what I'm going to be doing is probably switching that on and that on getting those up that's already on uh, I'm not sure why are these actually working should we take a look outside before we start a or before we roll the intro yeah they're, they're working I really need to replace the flares they're a little bit big. Uh, I'm going to have head tracking. I am at Echo Golf Bravo Echo. That's Coventry Airport. And uh, we're just going to be doing some left-hand circuits. Or probably just one left-hand circuit in this video. Uh, the plan is to take off today. Uh, actually, could I... Hang on a second. Uh, could I do that? No. I am going to do a left hand circuit. Uh, what I'm going to do is I am going to uh, figure out what the code for Honolulu is. I've, I've got a new, I've got a different idea. I've got a slightly different idea for this. Uh, right. The code for Honolulu is uh, 113.65. So. 113.65 what I'm going to do is I'm going to tune this in to 11365 I've got an, I've just got a really interesting idea I'm going to set this for 90 and we're going to be flying away from it all right so the plan is we're going to take off uh, actually it's not going to be 90 we want to be on a uh, let's think we're on 23 right now we want to be on 14. There we go. That's about right. Uh, let's just set everything up before the intro, uh, before I put the intro through. So if I stick this to what we're on currently, uh, that's 2-3, like so. That's our runway. Uh, we are going to be flying out 1-4, uh, 0 5, 3, 2, and then back. So what we'll do is we will go up to the intersection with Honolulu, turn along, fly along that, come back down, um, and then just, just fly around. That's all we're going to do. That should be pretty, uh, pretty easy, pretty simple to do. Um, of course, with the with my flight controls, it might not be as as easy as I want it to be. But you never know. Hopefully, hopefully it will be. So yeah, make sure you stay tuned for that. I suppose that's all I've got to say. Roll the intro. Right, the head tracking is on. The flaps are down, are they? I can't see it on that side. Yep, flaps are down. Uh, everything seems to be all right. If you have a look uh, just out there, you might be able to see a windsock just there. There is a stiff crosswind. In fact, there's one right there. I thought there was another one somewhere over there, but there's one right there. Uh, unfortunately, this is this is the problem with head tracking. But you can see there is a stiff crosswind. Um, it is variable, and it is 16 knots. So variable direction, 16 knots, could be anything from a crosswind to essentially a. I think it could be anything from a crosswind to a tailwind, even a headwind. So it, it is it is a little bit crazy. Uh, so we're going to have to watch that. It's going to make it flying very interesting at the moment. It's a crosswind. So we're going to be putting the ailerons into the wind uh, nice and slowly. But for now, we're going to start accelerating up. Here we go. All right. Watch that rudder to hold us first. Then the ailerons can go in. Keeping our ailerons in full full effect. 
up we go and you can see just how much of a crosswind there is there positive rate gear up I mean that is as essentially flying straight that is us now flying straight although we're sort of not flying straight I mean that's that's a little bit crazy but it's fun it's good fun so let's get ourselves up and away try and get this trim sorted out nice and early for us and we're going to try and do a climb around 90 knots and I am actually going to leave it with full props yeah, I'm going to leave full props uh, at the moment in fact let's bring those props back just a bit there we go and let's just fly out towards Honolulu right now and I think now at this speed we should be able to bring ourselves back to 2-3 quite nicely oops just been pushed down just a smidge there we go and we're just going to try and hold the 90 knots speed as we as we do our climb uh, Coventry is out to our right over there we're getting pushed down again this is a very interesting very interesting flight already the wind is it's interesting I hope that this is quite uh, sort of representative of real life uh, speed I'm holding the speed quite nicely and you can see there we're coming back on the localizer despite the fact that we're not actually heading uh, to th two three that just shows the way the wind is actually pushing us we need to be about two three seven to be able to maintain on the localizer I'm watching Honolulu coming up on us we're at one and a half thousand feet we want to keep climbing actually we do want to keep climbing around I'm thinking we're climbing to around uh, I want to climb to two and a half thousand but you can see here that though my pitch is not changing that much I'm not really adjusting the attitude of the aircraft it is it is responding uh, in such a in such a fashion with the wind pushing it I'm not actually doing much control on the stick so it's it's a little bit more difficult to respond uh, in this than it is in of course in real life but we are somewhat maintaining a a decent pull okay still 90 knots which is good coming up 2,000 feet and coming up Honolulu not far from the intersection with Honolulu um, I am using for those people who are new to this channel who haven't really seen haven't seen any of my videos uh, I am using Orbex's True Earth uh, True Earth GB it's got the full pack on it uh, in addition to that I am also using uh, this this just flight arrow uh, this Arrow 3, which is my favourite light aircraft, and I'm using Active Sky XP. Let's get this turned. Continue climbing, though. I said continue climbing, and of course it goes into a descent. shabby little bit off our target but not too shabby now at this point I think we should be able to fly one four quite nicely I will now reduce the props there we go reduce the mixture and bring in our flaps like so we should be able to accelerate quite nicely we're almost at 2500 which I'm fairly happy about uh, also, I'm going to actually just get rid of this so it's easier for you guys to see. There you go. So you can see that my props are at about 2,100 RPM, which is fine. Right, we're at 2,500. Let's try and stabilise ourselves here. 
This is where it becomes difficult. An aircraft like this, in windy conditions, does not like stabilizing as such. So I am going to try and manage it as best as I can. There it goes, it's pushing up again. I'm just going to increase speed nice and slowly. There we go. And we're going to use, I think we're going to use Echo Golf Bravo Whiskey as our uh, turn to the downwind leg. That's my, that's my idea anyway. Try and bring this, keep this nose down. Just does not want to stay down the entire way through. There we go. Alright, looking good, looking good. Oops, maybe not looking so good. Come on, there we go. Alright, so far the flight's going okay-ish. I'm going to pull back and listen on the throttles here. Ooh, okay, that's wobbly. A little gust of wind. Now, I think Active Sky really does have good representation of, of wind. Uh, the only thing is, sometimes it can be a little over the top. It's really good representation. It feels like there is a wind. It's not just a, a flat sort of... I say flat setup. I'm, I'm sort of referring to the fact that it doesn't seem like it's just essentially one you know, one set of wind that's doing nothing. If that makes any amount of sense, that makes probably makes no sense whatsoever. Uh, essentially what I'm talking about is that if there's wind and it's so static and stable that there's nothing happening. Uh, so, you know, there's no push, there's no gusts, there's no, there's no buffeting, a little bit of turbulence, things like that. A Active Sky really does a good job of making it feel like there is a lot more uh, than it seems. Now, in this one, if we want to be heading 050, I think we're going to have to fly 042, I'd say. Uh, we are managing to maintain 2,500-ish. Again, like I said, it's not easy. We're going 24. And X Sky again, is doing a, a good job of representing everything for us. At zero four zero, I don't want zero four zero. It's going to push us a little bit too far. I want zero five zero. Well, I don't want zero five zero. I want zero four five. Getting this aircraft turned into for that is not happening. There we go. That's kind of all right. Keep it stable. Keep it stable. It doesn't want to stay stable. All right, we're, we're not doing too bad. We're doing about 110 knots. Um, I have actually realised that I forgot to do something really stupid. That I forgot to adjust the Q and H. It's not too bad, thank goodness. Um, this is because I was. I had a look at the Active Sky stuff way beforehand. I completely forgot. But we are at two and a half thousand feet. There you go. That's a, a complete novice mistake right there. Never do that. Um, it's one of the first things to do is check your barometric pressure. Make sure you have the right pressure. So we're at two and a half thousand feet, which is absolutely fine. Thankfully, the pressure is not all too different today. Just uh, we're showing us about 60 foot off. going to continue. What I really should have done is switched off my fuel pump, which is fine, that's done now. It's just that in a flight simulator, it's especially with head tracking, it makes it very difficult to, to do things like this. But it's, it's, all the, it's all the fun. It's all the fun, right. The airport should be, there we go, a beam. You just saw that in the distance. Come on, keep it together. Now I already have the ILS for the airport set in, which is 109.75. Uh, 
and we are going to fly over this lake of which I have no clue what it is and then over towards well that looks like a small town uh, just thinking about where we are we are south of Coventry that means we should have flown over Warwick somewhere yeah, we should have flown over Warwick at some point and I've completely missed it I wanted to see if there's a castle there or not I'll have to have a look uh, afterwards so if we've flown over Warwick uh, and then we would have flown over the likes of what was it? Leamington Spa and Kenilworth Kenilworth? Kenilworth this Kenilworth, not Kennel um, this would be what? if I zoom out let's find out what could this possibly be? if that's Daventry so that's Daventry out there. That's Rugby. That's the that's the town of Rugby. Yeah. I think. So I'll tell you what, what we'll do is we'll do a turn over the town of Rugby. Because why not? Oh, just had a change in weather. Is this active sky? Oh, interesting. Um, right. I'm not sure if that's because Active Sky has, is trying to update the weather or that was the actual weather, how it changed. I wish there was smooth weather transitions. That's uh, it's a big deal for me. Unfortunately, we don't have uh, anything of the sort. Right, so I'm thinking... I don't know our actual distance from... Right, so when it was a beam, that was about two minutes ago. So, if I continue... So my thinking is, if I continue for... Another... Minute... Well, I'll tell you what, forget another minute. What I'm going to do is... Is that the M1, perhaps? Uh, maybe. Now, it might be the M1. I don't want to fly that far out, so I'm going to turn in. Yeah, we're clear to turn in. Let's turn in over at Rugby. We've descended a little bit more than I wanted to. That's alright, though. It's all practice. It's all getting back into it and, you know, getting control of the aircraft and remembering how to fly these. Uh, we're rolling out three two zero. There you go. Nice. It does look nice in in this haze. And then our next one there is a there's Coventry Airport right there again. If I bring in zoom to twenty nautical miles, you can see it's right there. So we're not that far away from the airport. Which means, now I would slow down, but I'm not going to slow down just yet. I do want to slow down on the leg though, I am on this base leg, I would like to slow down on it. But I'm thinking, I will slow down after I've acquired the localizer. No, wait, because if I remember correctly, X-Plane simulates the error from the localizer, so... Yeah, it might actually give me the error readings first. I'll think about when to slow down. Can I see the airport? No, not a chance. Not a chance at all. Right, okay. New plan. New plan, figure this out. That's the new plan. do not keep climbing, I do not want you to climb I don't want you to descend either still nothing on the localizer oh wait, there we go, localizer is 
alive, but I believe that's with a false reading. Yeah, I think that's with a false reading. And I think Glide Slug just popped in and out as well. I am way too high now. To slowly bring myself into a descent. Now that could be a that could be a correct reading. Saying I'm too high. Because that's essentially what I was talking about. I tell you what, let's start slowing ourselves down. Bring the mixture back up. Run this a bit rich. We'll start slowing ourselves down and very slowly easing the prop back in. ourselves descending a little bit again. There we go, props back to max. Uh, I'm not going to bother with the fuel pump, although I really should. Uh, fine, fuel pump can go on. That was actually surprisingly, that went surprisingly well. Uh, I still want to hold two and a half thousand. I do not believe we are that far off at this at this altitude. I know it's showing the glide slope showing us way above. I do not think we really I don't think we really are that high above. Where's the airport? Oh, I see the wrong way. I see the wrong way. Alright, here we go. As soon as that localizer starts moving, I will turn this aircraft. Oh, I don't want to descend lower than this. I still think I'm fairly good. I want to bring it into a slow descent. There's the localizer going. Come on, keep it turning, keep it turning. Oh, I should have gone for a 20 degree, 30 degree bank, not a 20. But we're all right. It's not too terrible. Given that we're going to get pushed off course in a minute. Right, now comes the difficult part. So, um, I'm thinking, I'm thinking, there we go, we're already being pushed off course. Look at that. There we go, look, you can see the red and white lights as well ahead, so that's why I said I didn't think we were that far off. Um, I am going to bring out one stage of flaps already. Let this aircraft slow down a bit. I won't bring out the gear until we are... Right, until we've, until we've got a stable approach going on. So I'm going to... Right, am I going to use a cross or a... Right, what do I want to do? Do I want to crab the aircraft or do I want to do a wing low? I think... Uh, I think I'm going to try a wing low. No, actually, no. For this kind of... No, for this kind of crosswind, I think a crab is probably better. Right, okay, keep descending. Keep descending. Right. Now, as soon as we cross this roundabout, I'm going to drop the wheels. Because that's only uh, a couple of miles from the airport, I think. And we could probably swap this out to tell us how far we are. There you go, two and a half miles from the airport. Alright, we're doing okay. We're doing okay. Now it's 90 knots. Now we're going to slow down further. We'll cross that roundabout. Landing gear out. Quiet. Let's continue our approach. Now, because it's uh, because it's this windy, I am doing a slightly faster approach speed, and I want a slightly higher landing speed too. Uh, that's my thinking. I'm not sure if that's a good idea, 
but I certainly feel like it's worth an attempt. I mean, look how much we're being blown off course here. We'll really be, actually, I'll slow down to about 70 knots. I'm, ju I'm just going to go for it. I'm just going to try it. And keeping it as stable as I possibly can with this wind really is not easy. I mean, you can just see which way I'm looking compared to which way I'm actually flying. And it's just very fine movements as I slow the aircraft down to ensure I don't drop too high or too low. And as I land, this is where the landing is going to be interesting because what I need to do is, for those people who are new to landing aircraft on crosswinds, what you need to do, on, especially on a light aircraft like this, although any aircraft you need to do this with, uh, once you touch down, you need to, you need to put your ailerons into the wind, and that's going to keep the that's going to keep the wing uh, that's being pushed by the wind the most down. Otherwise, what will happen is your aircraft will sort of balloon sideways. But then I don't know what X planes ground handling characteristics are going to do. So that's what I'm worried about at this point in time. Nothing more. Alright, we're coming in nicely, we're coming in nicely, that's not bad, that's not bad, we're down, aileron in, aileron in, that's a full aileron, that is full deflection there, my aileron is fully into the wind there, if that was not into the wind what would have happened is my, the craft would have started tipping in that direction, the aircraft, uh, that wasn't too bad, not the best landing, Certainly not the best landing, but uh, that wasn't too bad at all. So I'm going to bring myself off the off the runway right there, and there you go. You can just see that crosswind on that windsock. It's, it's telling you it's quite a crosswind, but that was that was actually quite nice. Uh, I guess I'll end it there. Thank you very much for watching. Please remember to hit the like button if you like this video. Subscribe to the channel for more videos on. Uh, explain 11 leave a comment in the comments box below letting me know what you think don't forget to support me on patreon www.patreon.com slash ec gadget your supports would be massively massively appreciated it would really really help me out uh, aside from that you can find me on social media uh, at ec gadget lp for both twitter and instagram links to all of that is in the description box below that's all from me and uh also some trains over there but that's all from me, and I'll see you guys next time in X-Plane 11. I do not recall an Alitalia. Is that an Alitalia? I do not recall an Alitalia plane being parked there. I know there is a large aircraft parked there, but it's not an Italia. Pottering along at about 20, 20 knots, or thereabouts. That's not too bad. But yeah, that's all from me, and I'll see you guys next time in X-Plane 11, where... I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of impressed that I managed to fly or land in, in a 16-knot crosswind. It's definitely interesting. But yeah, I don't know what I'm going to get up to. If you've got any suggestions, leave them in the comments box. Uh, we'll, we'll see what I can do. And if I can get hold of any more, uh, any more sort of add-on aircraft, uh, that would be pretty cool. I might, I might try and actually do that. I think I'll just stop the aircraft right here. I'll see you guys next time.